it hurts. Global warming, climate change and conservation. Words that are more often said than acted upon by governments and leaders of the world. The truth is, climate change has been brought about by the greed that favors few, but affects us all. And not just humans, the entire planet. If wild animals and plants had an enemy, it would probably be us humans. We need only look at the ways in which we've ravaged the earth to understand why. Here's some facts to help put this into perspective. Over the last century, the planet has warmed at a rate of one degree Celsius a year. Hard to notice as we go about our day-to-day -day lives, but over the past five years, temperatures have risen at record levels. The whole situation is linked to three human activities. The burning of fossil fuels, intensive farming, especially for meat and crop production, and deforestation. Here in Africa, extreme weather patterns are already wreaking havoc in many nations. In 2019 and much of 2020, parts of East and West Africa were hit by floods, leaving a trail of death and destruction. The region is also recovering from two devastating cyclones, which resulted in deaths and the displacement of thousands. The cyclones also destroyed crop production, leaving aid agencies to respond to multiple humanitarian crises. The scars of Cyclone Edai are visible. However, authorities and aid workers believe that they have the cholera outbreak under control. A desert locust invasion that started in the Horn of Africa has added to the region's woes. Crops that were planted by smallholder farmers have been destroyed by the pests. Meanwhile, weather experts have been predicting a drought on the heels of these floods. It seems when it rains, it pours in Africa. Even sunny spells are no longer normal. They are often searingly hot and accompanied by food and water shortages. This is climate change at play. And it's not just Africa. Asia, the Americas and Europe have all found themselves at the deep end of climate change. Cyclones, heat waves, fires and heavy rains are all becoming increasingly common. According to German infographics firm Statista, countries like China, Bangladesh, Pakistan and India are among the world's most polluted. However, countries like Finland, Norway, Sweden and Estonia are those considered least polluted. Here in Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, Ethiopia and Egypt are among those whose pollution levels are most worrying. Although there have been efforts to contain the situation, lack of cooperation is seen as the biggest impediment. Some conservationists see climate conferences as little more than talk shops. All heat, but no fire. We're here to raise our voices. Uh, we know that climate change has already started and it's killing us. While grandstanding marks this debate, coral reefs are disappearing and glaciers are melting leading to rising sea levels. Despite Africa contributing the least to the world's greenhouse gas emissions, the continent is feeling the heat. Food production is being compromised as populations continue to expand. Forests are being cleared to create habitats, which feeds into an already complicated situation. This is conflict. For a long time, the Sahel region was a bedrock of symbiotic coexistence between herders and farmers. Farmers would allow their nomadic brothers and sisters to graze their livestock on their land and fertilize it for the next growing season. But years of unfavorable weather patterns led to cycles of poor harvests. With dwindling food production, a conflict ensued. This is what has been exploited by Al-Qaeda and ISIL to create a potent security threat. This has already claimed a regime in Mali and has influenced election outcomes in countries like Nigeria and Guinea-Bissau. We could list more and more climate change related cases and incidents. However, this boils down to individuals and governments. Climate change poses a serious threat to the fundamental rights for all. It affects our access to food, to health and compromises our quality of life for individuals and communities. It is thus our individual, national and international responsibility to care for nature for us and future generations. 
The late Nobel laureate Professor Wangari Mathai once said, Mother Nature is very generous, but also very unforgiving. The reality is, if you destroy nature, nature could destroy you. If we are not careful enough and responsible, this could be practical in our lifetime. It would appear it has already started happening.